In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top mistakes that new software engineers make. And don't feel bad if you've made one or more of these mistakes, because these are all things that I've probably done in my career. And it's really just part of the growing pains of becoming a seasoned engineer, which I think most of us are aspiring to be. Now, the following mistakes can apply to maybe new developers or people who are still in school or maybe even people who are new to programming, which leads us to mistake number one. But first, copy time. All right, much better. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is a question that I get asked all the time. And it comes from people who are maybe coming from a different field who are trying to get into programming. And they always ask me, you know, what program should I learn first? Some people say, hey, I wanna be a full stack engineer, so should I learn JavaScript? That way I can learn front end as well as back end if I wanna pick up Node.js. Should I learn Python because I wanna get into AI and machine learning? Should I learn C++ because I'm really interested in game development? And my response is, you're still new to the game. You know, you don't even know if you like programming. So my advice is just pick a language and try to get as good at it as possible. A lot of people go to one language and then after they kind of learn it, they switch over to another one. And I know it's great because you want to put a lot of programming languages on your resume, but at the end of the day, it's not really that impressive to know how to write a for loop in 10 different languages. I mean, that is kind of impressive, but it's not really applicable and it's not really useful. You know, if you go into a programming interview and they ask you, you know, what's the difference between an abstract class and an interface? You're not going to really know that until you really get good at a certain language. So I usually suggest a language like Python or Java, which is pretty easy to pick up and then just try to master that language. When I first started out, I decided that I wanted to learn C++ and before I quit my job, I ended up taking a night class at a local community college. And I also ended up looking up tutorials on YouTube. I remember I watched the new Boston with Bucky Roberts and it wasn't really after like nine months of studying programming that I was like okay I quit my job and I decided to go full-time the next thing I wanted to talk about is writing unnecessary code because you think you might need it in the future this is something I see all the time in code reviews for example I remember doing a code review once where it was a get from a database but then they also wrote like an insert method a delete method an update method and I was like what is all this? And they're like, well, we might need that in the future. So I ended up just writing it now. And this really just ends up adding fluff to your code base. And it's stuff that might not ever be used in the future. And even worse, say someone looks at this in a few months or even a few years, they're going to be like, like, why do we have all this code? I don't know why this is here, but then they're scared to delete it because there might be other side effects that it causes. So it ends up just staying in the code forever. And it's just really dead code and adds to the technical debt. Luckily, some IDEs will show if there is a reference to a a certain function but say something references that function and then that outer function never gets called so you kind of have to like trace it back and see where something isn't being used and it just gets kind of messy and it's just not good so my advice is to keep it simple and only write the minimum code that you know that you'll be using the next thing that I want to talk about is just general coding standards for example repeating your code I had someone ask me the other day what is code refactoring and I told them well you know it's when you go back into your code and you restructure it and you make it a little bit cleaner and without really changing the logic. And they were like, well, why wouldn't you just write it like that the first time? And I was like, well, it's not really that easy because you might write all your code and then you might realize that you wrote the same few lines of code in like five different places. And it's like, okay, well, you could just take all those, put them in a function and then just call that function. Another thing is just not following proper coding standards. Say for example, like Python, you know that you'll need a certain amount of spaces per line, but say you're using a compiled language where before it goes to the compiler, it just rips out all the white space and tabs so that way it's up to the developer to practice those standards. For example, in C Sharp, say you're writing like a for loop or a while loop. When you have your opening brace, you actually are going to put that on a brand new line. Whereas in Java, it's usually better practice to keep that on the same line. So in that case, you generally want to look at the documentation, like say Oracle for Java or Microsoft for C Sharp. Or also you could just consult with your teammates to see what you guys all agree on. Now, the next mistake I want to talk about is not learning any version control technologies. If you're working on any project, either with a team or even by yourself, you should be checking your code into some kind of source control. That way, say you introduce a bug, you're able to go back to previous versions. My recommendation will always be to learn Git. I believe that it's really the best version control when it comes to working in a team because you're able to branch off and you guys can work on the same code base at the same time. Whereas in some other version control, say a subversion or a team foundation services, uh, you really have to check out the code and it gets locked 
and one developer can work on it until they implement their code and then the lock gets released. And that brings me to another point of really knowing the technology that you're working on before you start checking in your code. I previously made the mistake of when I was working in Subversion for the first time. Whereas say in Git, when you check something out, your code, your whole code is encapsulated within that Git project. But in Subversion, when you check something out, say there could be a library that could be used by multiple other projects. And I didn't know that. So I was like, oh, I don't need these libraries. Let me just delete them. And then my coworker immediately came over to me. They're like, what happened? Like the other, these other projects are not checking out these libraries anymore. And I was like, oh, I deleted them. And basically they weren't very happy about it. And, um, but luckily with version control, they were able to go back and recover those deleted files. So basically the point is you wanna make sure you thoroughly understand the version control that you're working on before you actually start implementing stuff with it. The next mistake that I see a lot is engineers that jump into the code without really knowing what they're developing. Now I see this both in technical interviews as well as just general software development. Now there's a graph here that pretty much sums it up and you see that the coding aspect is really just one part of the entire software development life cycle. It starts out with the idea and then the requirements needed to fulfill that idea. And once you have that, you need to design what you're building. You need to create the architecture about how all the different components are gonna to talk to each other, what kind of REST API are you using? If you're using REST, you know what are the different endpoints gonna do? What kind of HTTP methods are they going to have? What is your database schema gonna look like? And you really need to identify all these things, usually in like some kind of software requirement, usually in some kind of software requirements specification or an SRS, only then will you start writing your code. And if we go back to the graph, you see that the coding part is really just one small aspect of the entire process. Then after you write your code, you still have the testing, you have the validation to make sure that the software does what the requirements wanted. And finally, you have the actual use. And I also see this in a lot of interviews where people will get the problem and they'll just jump straight into the code. And a lot of times if you do that, and even if you get the problem right, you might still get a rejection because it shows that you're not really thinking about what you're doing before you're implementing it. You're kind of just figuring it out as you go, which is not a good thing. The next mistake I wanna talk about is not writing unit tests. I know we all love writing unit tests. Just kidding, none of us do. But you should really strive to unit test all of the code that you check in to try and get as much code coverage as possible. And I know for developers, we don't really like doing this, but just like in any job you have, there are certain aspects of it that you don't like, but you still have to do. You know, we like to just write our code, run it, see that it works and, you know, be done with it. And a lot of people are like, you know, it, I see that it works. Why do I need to write extra code to check that it works? And first of all, you only need to write your unit test once. So if you ever go back and change your code, say you're refactoring, then you already have written your unit test and you just need to run it. It also eliminates the chance that your code didn't work because of a possible network fail or a database call fail. Because with unit testing, you're gonna be mocking all that out. So you know that it's really just testing the logic of your code. Another good thing about unit testing is that you don't actually change any of your code. So you just write your unit test and it really shouldn't have any effect on your actual code. So I did have this coworker once that I was working with and so with unit testing, you can't directly call private methods, but what they were doing is they were actually just going in and changing the code to make it public so they could unit test it, which is totally wrong. Uh, what you should be doing is you should just be going to the outermost public method and making it so it hits that particular private method that you wanna test. So that's just another mistake that you should avoid doing. But yeah, you know, my company that I'm working at right now, they require to unit test all the code that we check in. And I really think that that's a policy that really every company should enforce. And last but not least is not taking breaks. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory, but our mind is only able to focus on something for a certain amount of time. That's why I say when you're in university, classes are only an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 minutes, because that's the study time frame of when our brain can focus the most. Now, I know it's really hard when you're wired in and you're in the zone, you wanna just keep writing code. And this reminds me of a certain story that I have. So I remember I was working on a Android app and I remember it was like midnight or something like that. And I was like, it's probably late and I should probably go to sleep. But I was like, no, like I'm in the zone. I feel like I can finish this up. And I ended up writing my code and like everything was working and it was like amazing. And I was like, see, like I'm a genius. And then I remember not looking at the code for a while and then going back to it like a few weeks later and I looked at it and I was like, what am I looking at? This doesn't make any sense. Like it works, but I have no idea why it works. And 
it was just like a mess and I had to pretty much rewrite everything. So you definitely need to make sure you're, you know, you're checking out for a little bit, go for a walk, you know, do whatever you need to do, you go to the gym or whatever, just to kind of reset your brain and just trust me, you'll thank yourself for that. So yeah, those are all the things that I wanted to cover. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, don't make those mistakes, but if you do, you know, it's okay. You know, it's part of the learning process. We all have to go through it. And the best thing is just to be aware of them and um, just make sure you, if you do make a mistake, try not to make that same mistake again. So yeah, as always, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.